What's up, Liron here. Today I want to talk to you about a trap that many aspiring artists fall into and how to avoid it. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today I want to talk to you, as I mentioned, about a trap that's very easy to fall to and I see a lot of aspiring artists fall into uh, and that is autopilot painting. Okay, and I'm going to talk a bit about what I mean by that. So my preferred way of creation as much as possible and it's a challenge but it can be done is to really be present with the thing that you're painting. So I look at something or drawing, it doesn't matter. I look at the object and I'm really trying to be sensitive to its nuances. What's the shape? How can I create interest? What makes it look like the thing it is? Okay? Now, what a lot of people fall into is a trap of going into autopilot mode. So, they either have a recurring mistake that they do the same thing over and over. For example, you paint a scene, this is what happened to me and I'm gonna dive deeper on that in just a moment. But you paint a scene and you wanna put the people in and instead of actually observing the people and placing them in as you see them, some tend to kind of invent it in their own mind but you don't really invent it you just place it there like a like a cutout it's the same it, it you, people don't put any thought into it they just go autopilot and put the people in there and it looks bad how do i know this because i've been doing it a lot in the past so it's something that just now i'm starting to uh to improve it now another dimension of this would be and this may be the source for this problem is that you learn from someone else, from another artist, and you model the way they do things, which is good, it's a positive thing, it's a way to learn and improve. But then what ends up happening is you take their own impression, you kind of borrow that instead of bringing your own. So the whole magic of learning from others is to take their unique vision, learn from that, and then bring it back into you and, and then continue to use your personal vision and your unique way of doing things, okay? And you, don't, you can't just borrow someone else's way of doing things completely because then your art won't be as authentic as it can be and it's, it's a shame. So what happens is you learn from someone else and perhaps, and I'm going to show you an example of this, like a specific example of this, perhaps the way someone paints trees. And then you just do it that way without putting into any thought into how you, the tree actually looks like. The tree's in front of you and I always tell people the answer to your artistic question or the, the problem you're trying to solve is in front of you. Just observe the object very carefully. Try and analyze it as much as possible and you will get your answer. But if you borrow someone else's impression of how to paint trees, then you're at a problem. Now, I just want to mention, as a disclaimer, there's nothing wrong with learning and modeling other people. I do that all the time. When you watch my videos, you do that as well. That's perfectly fine. But there comes a time where these training wheels need to be taken off and you have to put your own expression onto it, okay? So this is a very easy trap to fall into. You end up copying someone else's vision. And I think the really, the, the biggest problem with it is, as I mentioned, you're not conveying and expressing what you see in your own unique way okay and to really become great and this is something i'm starting to learn because i observe all of the, the best artists out there uh, in my kind of niche of watercolor is you have to develop your own personal way of doing things it can be similar there can be similarities influences but every artist that really made it they have something that's unique that's only theirs and when you really think about it deeply there is no way not to develop that if you work hard enough because we're all so different. We're all, there are so many small nuances in the way we even hold the brush or hold the pencil or the, the amount of pressure we like to put on the paper. So all of these variables go into play when you paint. So there is no way your, your per, most highly perfected style will end up looking exactly like someone else's. There, there's no way that'll happen. Again, and if you want an example of influences, you have uh, Alvaro Kestene and then you have Keiko Tanabe that learned from him. And her style really resembles his in some aspects, but she does things very differently. Her color choices are different. The way she simplifies the scene is different. Her compositions are different. That even the subjects she likes to focus on are different. And you can clearly see that she learned under him or from him, but she does things very uh, authentically and in her own way. So now that we exhaustively covered the problem, let's talk about the solution. So I have two solutions for you. Number one is to just be aware of it, okay? 
the moment you uh, become aware of that thing, you, you will think about it because while painting, you'll go into autopilot mode, you'll put the tree the way you learned by someone, uh, by, a, by a specific artist that that's how you paint trees. And then you'll be like, oh wait, why the, it looks nothing like the reference? Why did I do that? And so and then you'll catch yourself doing it and slowly but surely you'll rewind and then it'll stop happening for you for, with trees. And then it'll stop happening for you with buildings and then with people and slowly but surely you will build that awareness. Now the second solution, which is very simple, and I'm gonna show you an example right here, is to focus your practice sessions on just the one subject in which you go into autopilot mode. So for me, no questions asked, that was people. So I, I, I stand outside, I use my easel and I paint what I see, the scene, and then comes the time to put in the people and I didn't put enough work into incorporating them in the scene fully and they always ended up looking like cutouts because I would go into some kind of an autopilot mode where I just put them the way I imagine they look and actually a strong influence of mine which isn't a bad thing was Alvaro Castaneda and I'm gonna show you just opening it up on the iPad so if you look at this example this is how uh, he paints people and that's not my, by the way, you can see the reflection of my phone, uh, but that's not my way of doing it. But I found out that I ended up falling into the trap of copying the way he does it. So what I decided to do is to paint people from uh, photo reference, direct observation, it doesn't matter really, but to focus only on developing my own way of doing things. And, and so I did all of these quick sketches of people and when you look at this, it looks nothing like this. Now, of course, this is smaller and it's more economical for large scale paintings, but I will find a way to dumb these down and still preserve my own style, you see? So I had to do all of these practice sessions and more that you don't see here, a lot of them, just to unwind that autopilot I had with, with sketching and drawing people and do it my way, okay? So this is just a pure example of how to get rid of this uh, kind of trap that you may fall into, okay? Uh, so again, the problem, the trap is you end up copying someone else's style. It's not authentic, it's your, not your type of creation. And also it's not as fun. When I go into this autopilot mode, I feel like it's not as fun. I feel like I'm not enjoying as much. I'm just doing it like a robot. So that's the problem. Now the solution is one, develop awareness that it happens. And number two, focus on the one thing where you figure out that you go into that mode. So it can be uh, uh, painting cars or trees or buildings or people or domes of buildings, whatever it may be, you can go really specific here. Um, and that's it, that's, those are the best solutions I currently have from just working on solving this myself. Uh, another third solution that's my default solution is just to practice a lot but that that just amplifies whatever you do uh, and makes you better um, at the things that you exercise and practice in uh, but in any case this is all the advice I have for you I will definitely share more if I uh, stumble upon new insights if I learn new things I will say one thing that you want to pay attention to just the last last tip and that is notice what makes an object look the way it does and I will make a separate video on that but Try and figure out what the essence of the object or subject you're painting is. What's the bare bones thing that you can drop everything else and people will understand what it is. And there you have a clue as to how to simplify it. And then you can put in your own style. That's just, a, it's a bit of a different advice. I don't want to confuse you. But in any case, I'm going to talk about that in a separate video. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in a comment below what you thought of this. Um, I really hope my insights can help you as I gain them. Very pleased with how these sketches turn out, especially this one that I shared everywhere. You probably have seen it uh, wherever you follow me on Instagram, especially I shared like the stages and comparisons and stuff like that. Um, so I really wanna thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you thought of this one. And if you want me to do any other video on any other topic, uh, let me know. I know there's a huge backlog of comments. I do plan on answering everyone, okay? so. Stay patient, I will get to you, I promise. Um, at my current state, I can afford it. I don't know if in the future I will be able to, but hopefully I will. But right now I can and I try to reply to every uh, single comment, so I will try to get to all of them. And I do take your ideas, um, I just copy and paste them into my task of to do or to film videos. Okay, so I really do read it and I really uh, do turn it into video, so be sure to leave a comment down below. Like the video if you like it. If you still haven't subscribed, subscribe and hit the bell button to receive notifications for future videos. I want to thank you once again, and I will see you again in another vid real soon.